It's the result of someone else fail. The fact that you are able to hear us and you are able to receive this team here today is the result of someone else fail. Faith. Someone's else action. And I would like to appreciate the faith and the action and the effort of uh, Pastor uh, Prince Ali and Zelia Gray. That has been wonderful. It's been great. Thank you. The first time when Pastor Prince Ali said he would like me to come to Nigeria to Port Harcourt to pray, I said, well, you will have to believe God. You will have to really believe God for it because, I mean, I don't have any plan of coming to Nigeria. I mean, I've been invited by the redeemed church. I've been invited by everybody, you know. You know, any, you know Paul, Farnas, Adi Farasi, that is uh, rock on the church or whatever you call it. I was on the rock, uh, you know, I've been invited by Winners Chapel, they, they, I, Pastor Bishop Oyedeko, I've been invited by Pastor Bishop Wale, okay, I've been invited by N.U. and U. But I don't just, you know, sing so much. So, But as the Lord will have it, just this, this time around when I got another letter from Pastor uh, Prince Ali and he said he would like me to come for this conference, this, part, this time of the year. Now, it so happened that at, for, for the, precisely the same time that he was inviting me to come to Nigeria for November, that was exactly the same time that I got an invitation from President Obasanjo to come and visit him. So, so, I just knew this was God. So I just knew I had to agree to this invitation and, you know, matched it with the invitation of the president. And Pastor Waleoke, who is a very uh, uh, great man of God, and a good uh, mentor and a good uh, you know father figure to me also so uh, then I just say oh then you know I've got to make it to this place and put all this together and I knew Port Harcourt was in God's, Port Harcourt was in God's agenda <laughs> and so thank you for coming Thank you for believing this man of God that it is actually possible to bring Pastor Sunday to Port Harcourt. And thank you for coming to attend it. Some didn't believe it, and they are not here today. And they are going to miss out on the, pro, on the, on the blessing. But you believed and you came, and you are going to be a partaker of that blessing. Yeah. It's wonderful. Now, this morning, I'm going to be speaking on the supernatural ministry. How many of us are pastors here tonight, this morning? Pastors. Good. A large number of you. Now, I'm going to be speaking on the supernatural ministry. What am I speaking on this morning? Yeah, on the supernatural ministry. Now, when I talk about the supernatural ministry, sometimes in the Christendom, and especially in charismatic churches, when we talk about the supernatural ministry, we most often refer to, you know, the spectacular, like signs and wonders, like uh, miracles, healing, and all that. But the supernatural ministry that I'm talking about, that I'm going to be preaching about this morning, is slightly different. Of course, that is an aspect of the supernatural, to walk in signs and wonders, and uh, in the miraculous, but that is another part of A. But the one I'm talking about today, it lets me kind of try to define it to you. The supernatural ministry that I'm referring to is how can you have a ministry with a supernatural touch? That is to say, anybody who sees you at any time or witnesses your ministry will testify to the fact that Look, 
something is happening in this guy's ministry that could never have happened otherwise unless God be with him. Now, if you look at the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, he had a supernatural ministry. And, you know, when God, the, the, uh, in John chapter 3, uh, what, what is his name? Nicodemus came to Jesus secretly. And he said, there is the kind of miracle that you are doing in your ministry and the kind of works that you are doing, is nobody can do it unless the Lord be with him. So that right there is talking about supernatural ministry. So we are talking about a ministry that will be the evident to everybody that, look, this can never be done by man. I mean, this is not man's hand and it's not man's effort. I mean, you will not even need to talk to anybody that you have a supernatural ministry. You will not even need to open your mouth. People just need to see it and say, my, the hand of God is sure upon this ministry or upon this church. So, for example, when you look at, uh, can I have a glass of water here? Because I'm getting adjusted to the weather. You know, we are coming in from winter. So, is, yeah, we are coming in from winter. In fact, in Europe right now, like in the Ukraine where I come from, it was snowing the day we left. So, you know, snows, snow. So, snow was just coming down, and that is winter. That means it's winter when it's snowing, you see. So, and we are coming to the heat. So, now, you know, the mouth is dry, and the saliva is gone. So, we need to keep on drinking water all the time to get, <laughs> to get back to the heat and the humidity. But you are okay, yeah? <laughs> so, anyway... So, what, what do I mean by this supernatural ministry? For example, we have many evangelists in the world, but how many evangelists are able to gather one million people at a single meeting and have about half a million salvation in one night? Not too many. But if you look at the ministry of Rehan Bunke, have you heard of the ministry of Rehan Bunke? You will see that there, is a, there are evangelists and they are evangelists. You could see the supernatural touch upon his ministry. So you don't need to be convinced. You don't even need to be told that that guy is having a supernatural ministry. Not just, I mean, I tell you what, there are many people who are having more signs and wonders than Rehan Bonke all over the world. But his ministry is so supernatural that it is evident. Okay? When you look at the ministry of Benny Hinn, you can see that's a supernatural ministry. Now, when you look at the ministry of people like uh, Yongi Sho, you could see very clearly or evidently that this is, this is beyond the ordinary. It's supernatural. When you come back to Nigeria, for example, and you look at a ministry like the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and you see them everywhere, you know that this, they are, this is a supernatural ministry in the sense that the, at the rate at which it grows and the result that it produces, you know, in comparison to the, to the efforts put in, everybody put effort into the ministry. Why do they have exponential growth and results that is incomparable to any? That is a sign of a supernatural ministry. Okay, let me try to describe it to you in another way. For example, you and I, or any one of us, we set out to begin a ministry, to begin our ministry. Let's say we start, you start your church regularly, just like anybody will start so from the scratch. And in one year's time, you have a hundred people. Of course, that's a blessing. Of course, you know, it is also supernatural even to have one person in your ministry. But that is not the kind of ministry, supernatural ministry I'm talking about. So if you have 100 people after one year, I would not say you have a supernatural. That, that's, that's quite ordinary, I think. I think anybody could do that. But if we say, this guy started his ministry last October, 
And by the 6th of October, one year later, he's already having 1,000 people. Then you begin to come close to the kind of thing I'm talking about. That, yes, that should be supernatural. For example, then, if we say he's, he's, he's not only having 1,000 people after one year, but he has gone to a hard place, like he's gone to America. And in one year, he's been able to build a church of 1,000, or he's gone to Europe, and he's been able to build a church of 1,000, not in 10 years, like people will normally do, not in 15 years, but he's built a church of 10,000 or 1,000 in one year, then they say, it's not only that he has built a church of 1,000 in one year, but his church is full of Europeans. Then you know that is a total, totally supernatural ministry. Now, why am I talking to you about this topic today? By the grace of God, I think the Lord has graced me to experience what the supernatural ministry means. So, and it is my joy to be able to extend that to you. It is, it is my joy that you'll be able to experience that kind of thing. For example, in my ministry, the Lord will not allow me to travel out of my church till four years ago. 2000, the year 2000, God said, you are now free to begin to travel. So, the four, 2001, I began to really travel all over the world. Now, that is only three years ago. In three years that I began to travel out, out of my local church, if you mention the name of Pastor Sunday in any part of the world, in the Christian world, any part of the world, in Christendom, if you say Pastor Sunday, just in three years, everybody from Jakarta in Indonesia to South Africa or to Spain or to Latin America or to North America, to Canada, to U.S., will be able to say, oh, yeah, we know that name. In three years. Now, for you to know what that means, there are people who have been in the ministry for the last 20 years, and if you mention your, their names, maybe only in their city they will recognize them. Even in their own country, they will not even know who we are talking about. We are talking of supernatural ministry. Okay, for example, uh, I've been having invitation to go to minister in America for the past 10 years. But God will not allow me. So the first time I went to America was 2001, three years ago. Now, in three years, just three years, I've been going to America. Today, I have spoken to more Americans than the Americans living in that their countries or themselves. Just in three years. That is not normal. Because even in Nigeria now, I mean, you, you've heard that, you've, you must have heard many pastors who've been traveling to America all the time. Nobody even knows in America that they exist. Talk less of that they come even to America. So I'm talking about impact, supernatural power of God that will make you just to go there one time and for you to be able, for the whole country to remember that you have visited. So there is a supernatural finger. So for example, when the people saw the supernatural dimension of the ministry of Jesus, they tend to accuse him of something. They said, no. He's doing all this by the power of Beelzebub and the, the, you know, the prince of demons. Then he said, no, if I do it by the spirit of God or by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. There is something we call the finger of God, the dimension of the finger of God. So that is what I'm trying to describe to you when I say uh, or, or talk about the supernatural ministry. So by the grace of God, I want you to be hungry 
for more than the ordinary ministry. I want to challenge you to believe God for the kind of ministry that carries the finger of the Almighty God. Now, it is good to be in the ministry and to be relatively successful. But I want to challenge you today to go beyond just success. I want to challenge you to go to the realm of the supernatural ministration. When the hand and the finger of God, Makata, With so much rest, the supernatural. Spirit of the Almighty God. We so much be evident. And of course, I am struggling right now. Maybe you could say, The Holy Spirit is so much on me, I could hardly speak. to challenge you to believe God for the dimension of the operation of the Spirit. That will make you to start and do in one year what people have endeavored to do for hundreds of years and could not do. There is a dimension like that. So, it is not enough just to make it in ministry. It is not enough, my brother, just to survive in the ministry. It is not enough even to be successful in ministry. It is even more important to have this dimension of the finger of God upon your ministry. For example, I told you about a visit to America. <laughs> okay, for example, I was just with maybe you've heard of who Pastor T.D. Jakes is. T.D. Jakes, have you heard of her? So I was just with him last two weeks. And he was telling his story how he had to put about 35 years into the ministry before he could come to where he is now. And I was, I and him were the two main speakers at this conference. And we were there together. So the place where he was, he was saying, the place where I'm standing now to be able to speak to you, I needed to put 35 years there and only about 10 years ago, the Lord started revealing me and really magnifying my ministry. And I was there. And you know, I was not born in America, not born in Europe, born in Nigeria, growing up here, and I'm only 37 years old. And he's, you know, he's like 50-something, 50 50 57 maybe. 
And so he's about 20 years, my senior. And he's been there for going for 20 something years in the ministry. And he said for him to be able to stand there, and I had only been allowed to begin to go international, to even travel to America for the first time three years ago. And now we're already standing together to speak on the same platform. So what do you, how do you describe that? The supernatural ministry. For example, maybe you've heard of TBN. Have you heard of TBN? For you to be able to come on TBN, you need to pay a lot of money. But besides that, even if you have money, that is not a guarantee that you could be on TBN. <laughs> okay, for example, in Europe, I know so many pastors, in fact, in America, so many American pastors, big time pastors, like I have 5,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 people in America. That is, supposed to, that is success. That is good for America. They have money to pay, but they cannot go on TBN. They were telling me. I went to America one time. I was going back there the second time when I began to receive emails and telephone calls just before my trip and saying, the president and the founder of TBN, they are begging you to please come and visit them. I said, what happened? <laughs> so I didn't need to pay. And of course, I didn't know anybody. I didn't even need to write application. And of course, I didn't even, you know, till tomorrow, I cannot explain to you how they go to hear my name. And there is, every time I go to America, they are looking for, they pay for my ticket, they send limousine, they pay for the hotel, they do everything just for me to be able to come and preach for them for free. And each time I do, I, they give me an opportunity like that. They don't make it just local because they are local TBNs in the state states or in some areas but they just make into 200 countries at a time international <laughs> so from nowhere to international exposure in three years so how do you explain that if you had been if i had been the only preacher in the world well maybe it would have been say, regarded as natural. But there are millions of preachers in the world. In America alone, we have four million preachers. <laughs> that might be as big as your state. That's only preachers. <laughs> so, how do you describe that kind of phenomenon? finger what kind of ministry do you desire do you desire to have let's face it do you just want to survive in the ministry let's face it is it enough for you just to be a local champion The supernatural ministry. The supernatural ministry. There is a ministry that is 
with that touch of the supernatural. And of course, it will do to you and for you what no advertisement will do. When we are talking of the dimension, dimension of the supernatural ministry, long leg becomes useless. And you will not need anybody to introduce you to nobody. The angelic host of heaven will take their responsibility upon themselves. The supernatural ministry. What do you desire to have? I say, what kind of ministry do you desire to have? The one that is barely making it and barely existing and barely making two ends to me or the one that you have not even succeeded in opening your mouth and things are already happening. May the Lord raise you to be the eagles of these last days. Yeah. And cause the touch of the supernatural that is beyond understanding to rest upon you, your life and ministry. The supernatural ministry. What are you hungry for? What is the desire of your heart? What are you desperate for? Again, let me make it clear that when I'm talking about the supernatural ministry now, I don't mean you just going about and opening blind eyes and uh, you know, making deaf speak and all that, which is good. But you see, all these signs were supposed to be following any believers anyway, so that's not the one they were talking about. I'm talking about the dimension in God. And may God allow you to reach it. Yeah. A dimension in God that will be, it will make it so clear that nobody before you has even attempted talk less of doing what this guy has done. So no, you don't even need to convince anybody. It's just very clear. Nobody has ever done it. That is what pulls the supernatural touch upon a ministry. Supernatural. You don't even need to begin to talk. You just know it. This one. So when you begin to look at a man's life or ministry and you try to look for the evidences and the arguments and the logistics that makes it to look so successful, and you try to put all the ABCs together and no one is, you cannot just explain it. That is the thing I'm talking about. In this Nigeria today, you could begin if the supernatural hand of God comes upon you. The whole nation will begin to say we have, despite that this country is already over flooded, with preachers, they will begin to say, ah, ah, we have not even seen anything like this before. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Even the ones that have said they have made it, they will begin to look at you and say, ah, there is a grace of God upon that guy's life. Oh. That is the kind of thing I'm talking about. 
I was just preaching in one country in Europe last month, and one of the fathers of, the la- of this land of Christianity in Nigeria was at that meeting. And when he listened to me, he told all his pastors in that country, in Europe, and said, ha, when I look at Pastor Sunday, I mean, if I mention his name, all of you know him, he's a father in this land. He says, I can't believe it. He said, this pastor, Sunday, there is the hand of God upon him that reminds me what used to happen in Nigeria about 20 years ago. He said, God, return it home. Bring it back home. That's the kind of thing I'm saying. So no matter what is already happening, when the finger of God comes and rests upon you and upon your particular ministry, people will be saying, ah, they will see God in a new light just because of you. So when I'm talking about the supernatural ministry, I am saying there is a dimension like that. We call the supernatural ministry. For example, if you talk about the supernatural ministry, one of the greatest names that the Lord has raised up from this continent of Africa is the name Bishop Benson Adaosa. And of course, he had it. And his, at the time, his name was synonymous to the name Nigeria. <laughs> so, but at the point of his death, he had planted over 6,000 churches all over the world. Now, listen closely to me. Church of God Mission, there were over 6,000 of them. There is a lady they call I.D. Baker. You, most of you do not even know her. She had an encounter with the Spirit of God. Ten years ago, or six years ago. In six years, she went to the country of Mozambique and eastern part of uh, southern eastern part of Africa. In six years, she built and planted six thousand churches. That is all what the pastor Idaosa did all through his whole life. One poor lady that nobody knows for six years. How do you describe that? So the thing that you call a lifetime achievement, someone will come and tell you it's a start. So how come we come and be looking at some things and think, if only I could get there, why could you believe God that for you it could be a start? That which all of them are talking about. To be your own start. Of course, you know by the grace of God, that as I said, I have, God has given me the opportunity and the privilege to experience what supernatural ministry is. I have spoken about the international aspect of our ministry, but you cannot believe it. I live in a white man's country my wife's man's line. <laughs> you cry. I don't even know what we have to start. But if you begin to hear some of the stories of what God has done through this, in fact, this is my pastor that you hear, the lady pastor, Natasha, she said when she gets to Nigeria and she sees the soil, she's going to kneel down on her face and kiss the soil with her own mouth because of what the soil of Africa has brought to our country. That's a white Oyibo woman.
So what will make Oyibo to come and be kissing Grand here? You know, he's only God. What will make people to say, people who, who you thought might even have been superior to you, will come and now be praying at your feet? That's what we call the supernatural dimension. Are you listening to me? So there are keys to lock into it. And those keys I was planning to give you, I'm planning to give you this week, if the Lord permits. And I want to believe that you will get it. But because I'm dying of heat, <laughs> and because I want you to get a clearer picture of what I'm talking about, I would like to inv invite a few people to testify of the spirit supernatural aspect of the ministry of our ministry as they have seen it from their own from their own experience pastor malachi was just with us this year pastor rufus has known me he, we study in the same oh not in the same university but the same city as students in the university so he knew me from when I was not even a minister and up to now I will continue of course my message but before I continue Pastor Malachi, Pastor Rufo will you come here share some things with the people of God then later on we will continue Hallelujah I thought you wanted to clap for he Jesus was, He was <laughs> I will say that You know, he's got some Russian, he has a lot of Russians also in Spain, in his country. And he was just telling me yesterday in the plane, in France, <laughs> that what God is doing in the Ukraine. Because he said, he, he will try to reach out to those Ukrainians in Spain. No, you say, that's right. But you know, to be identified with someone with the Spirit of God is a blessing. Well, um, August this very year, the Lord brought I and Pastor Sunday together to know each other. And he invited me to come over with my wife to the Embassy of God in Ukraine. What I saw there is beyond expression. Now, the things that I saw are things that one can only apportion to the supernatural. You know, when God is doing something, the thing that will happen is that you will know God is doing it. It has nothing to do with big names. What we need is the Holy Spirit and not big names. We don't need revival that comes from men, but revival that comes from the throne of God. That's what is important in these last days. The thing I saw, how people, I've been in Europe for some years. I saw people, I'm talking about, I'm talking about fellow Nigerians. You know the way we are brought up, in the way that we were taught something about God religiously or in the way of the new life that is in Christ. I hope you understand what I mean by that. But I saw people that are right off. You know, the way we say it sometimes. It's like these people, they don't know anything about the Lord. When I got to that place, the Friday for the all-night prayer, I'm talking about the night vigil. I saw people rushing down to the church as though they are going for a football match. Going to the stadium. And I saw people on their knees crying to God. And I'm talking about members of parliament.
if you want to clap, clap for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wouldn't like to take much time. You know why I decide, you know, I just made up my mind, decided to say this. It's because we live in a society wherein people feel they are too much in the church. You know, you know I'm, 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 I'm a senator. I come when it is just a few minutes to the end of the service. I will come in. I, you know, I'm so busy. But I saw members of parliament getting on their knees, crying before God, so submissive. That is the finger of God. I saw, you know, I was talking with Pastor Sunday. I asked him, who is that young girl talking with you? Because they were inside her limousine. He said, that girl is just 22 of age. She's, a, she's one of the directors of one of the prominent banks they have in that city. And this girl is crying out, she wants to know the Lord. Are you listening to me? You know, for us to dwell on this, we wouldn't live here today. But there are more things that God wants to bless us with. You know what you need to do? Believe God for a visa, get a ticket, go down to Ukraine. And I tell you, I want to say this, what God is doing in Ukraine, is going to do more in Spain because I'm there. Put your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> As Pastor Sunday was saying, I've been with him when he was not yet a pastor. And I witnessed everything God has been doing through his life and his ministry from the very beginning. And I will tell you that up to now, I still marvel. At what God is doing. I can only explain this as the supernatural hand of God. And this is what pastor is talking about today. And I believe that every one of us here will be able to partake of this grace upon his life. When I... I can just give you some few, share some few things I, I've been noticing. It's a very strange phenomenon. Everywhere Pastor Sunday goes to minister, and now I want you to understand this, that this is not about Pastor Sunday. We are talking about the phenomenon of the Holy Spirit. We are talking about what the Holy Spirit is doing in this later day, and he want every one of us who are called to minister to partake of. And he's just raising up someone to model that so that we can see that and hunger after that and believe the same for our life and ministry. Amen. I remember the time Pastor went to, a, uh, to minister. I think that was the first time he traveled out of the church. I think it was to England or Netherlands. And he went to preach. People who have been preaching, who have been in the ministry for a long time, after hearing what God is doing, I, I mean, after hearing or listening to the message, I think there was a church, about 50, uh, a minister who had about 50 churches under his uh, ministry. He just came and kneeled down and said, I want to come under your covering. One day. How do you, how do you announce, how do you call that? How do you describe that? How can that happen? Without the hand of God, it is very supernatural. I see that everywhere Pastor Sunday went to go to minister, the grace of God or the favor of God just come around. I don't know how to explain. I'm just telling you, I don't. When he, I call him and I try to just follow what is going on, I always just marvel at the story, at what God. I cannot follow the space. It's as if.
doing church as usual will no longer work. We need only one thing, and that is the finger of God. And that is what Pastor Sunday is talking about today. And that's what we are believing God for throughout this week. And I want you to open your heart and be prepared that the Lord of hosts will rest upon you and his finger will be upon every one of us here. In Jesus' name, I won't take more time.